Hey guys, welcome back to Scott's Reviews. So I know I'm gonna do videos on camera gear, speakers, all that kind of stuff, but this is gonna be a little bit of that, but uh, we're gonna talk today about buying a car. Uh, particularly, I just bought a Jeep Wrangler. I've been waiting a long time for that one, but I kinda of wanna go over my process. Uh, this will be a couple of different videos about how I negotiate to buy a car, what happened on my Jeep Wrangler deal, kinda of had some ups and downs, the final deal that I got, uh, dealing with the dealership I dealt with, the sales manager, the finance team, uh, and then we're going to talk about something you may be interested in, which basically is how to make sure you get all the incentives that are out there on EV vehicles through a lease. Uh, and then if you want to buy the car back, immediately buy it back right afterwards, how that works out. Uh, I haven't done that part yet but that will be the last video that I make about this. All right, let's talk about how I buy a car. My research that I do from the get-go. Number one, uh, emails. Uh, what happened after COVID kind of changed things a little bit where dealerships are more inclined to work with you online through emails and actually give you firm offers on deals, which is really good for the consumer. That way you don't have to go all around town, drive, 30, 40 miles to get to different dealerships to try to talk to them, to get a, a price, all that kind of stuff. You need to go out and find the exact vehicle that you want. If this is new, it's easier. Find the exact vehicle you want, the exact options you want in the car, know the MSRP, um, and then from that point, email that to, let's say, three or four dealerships in your general area that you can, uh, you can find. That will give you a basis point of some offers now they may not all give you offers but they most will today will all give you some type of offer once you start getting those offers in uh, through email then you want to go ahead and try to take the best one and get the dealership that you want to work with more because it's closer maybe and get them to meet or beat that offer um, so that kind of sets the standard. Um, and then we need to think about a couple different things when it comes to the offer. Be careful of manufacturers, rebates, incentives coming from the manufacturer that you're buying from. So for instance, Jeep, if Jeep is offering online um, a thousand bucks, 500 bucks to first responder, whatever it is that they are offering, that has absolutely nothing to do with the dealership you're trying to buy your car from. Again, nothing to do with the dealership you're trying to buy your car from. What is that dealership gonna do to make this deal happen, right? It could be $5,000 in rebates from the manufacturer and they say, hey, we're giving you 6,000 off. Well, basically it means that dealership is giving you $1,000 off for what they've are offering versus the next dealership down the street. So make sure you know that's separated. Like what, when you ask them, what is your best price? Say, I know the rebates are this. How much can you give me off the MSRP of this vehicle compared to any other dealership? And let them give you your invoice, minus holdback, whatever they can come up with and get that number off the price of your car. And then you could add first responder or whatever else is out there from the manufacturer on top of that. Once you've established the deal you want, you have all the rebates and stuff you want off the car, and you have tried your best through every dealership to get the best deal, um, and then you can get kind of picky. So go to the dealership that's giving you the best offer that you think you're gonna work with, test drive the car, and you may wanna come home then, whatever. If you wanna get those last minute pushes, it's basically when, this happens when you're sitting at the dealership and they're going, they've given you the offer, you test drove the car, you're sitting there, you're not sure, because you're not sure, you're never gonna be happy and positive, you're never sure yet. Um, blame it on your wife, blame it on your spouse, blame it on your partner, whatever, uh, but someone's not sure the deal wants to happen. And then you can ask for the small things like weather door guards, floor mats, um, other parts that you wanted to put on the car that dealer could do themselves through ordering the part, 
that's when you can kind of slip those in. Another 500 bucks off to make it happen. Hey, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go home and think about it. We wanna check some other dealerships real quick or we're just not 100% sure and I'll try to talk in, well, what can we do today? Well, today, if you want me to buy today, I want floor mats, I want another 500 bucks off the car and then I'll do it. And nine times out of 10, they're gonna, they're gonna make it happen just to make sure you don't walk out the door and just get the deal done that day. Cause they normally always want the deal done that day. I hate that, but they do. Um, if they ever say to you, um, this deal's not good if you, uh, tomorrow or the next day, then just walk. Because believe me, if you came in the next day and you wanted to buy the car with that same deal, they're going to make it happen. So don't fall for that. So that's kind of how I, I gauge the price of my car. Now, trade in. Totally different transaction. Now it's easier today. You need to get quotes. Carvana and CarMax is the ones I use. CarMax has been a little more, has been stronger for me lately, like a lot stronger. Um, but our firm offer from CarMax um, gives them really not too much wiggle room to give you a bad offer on your car. Because let's say your car is worth $10,000 on CarMax and they come back with like 7,000. Then you know, that's not gonna happen. So they know they need to meet it or come right under it. A lot of them try to come right under it and then they give you the line about, depending on your state, using that trade-in as to redu reduce the tax costs. So how that works is basically, each I'm in Maryland so it does affect it. So if I have a $10,000 trade-in and I'm buying a $30,000 car, basically I don't have to pay $30,000 in taxes, I have to pay $20,000 toward taxes because that 10,000 reduces the price of the car. If you're in a situation where your trade is worth more than your, the car you're buying, so you have a very expensive trade that you're, you're, you're trading in, it's worth $30,000, and the vehicle you're buying is worth $25,000, then basically you will pay zero tax and you will get a check from the dealership for 5,000 bucks very, in a very easy scenario. So they will leverage that to you saying, if you trade it in with us, you get the tax incentive. So, but you still want to try to get them to match that CarMax deal. Let's talk about CarMax. There are dealerships out there that have partnerships with CarMax. So ask them, do you guys have a partnership with CarMax? And let them tell you yes or no. Some do, some don't. Uh, how that works is basically I've heard is that if they have a partnership, they have it agreed upon, uh, they will basically take that offer you got from CarMax for $10,000, make the deal happen as the trade-in. They give you $10,000 off the price from the trade-in. They would take that certificate and take your car and drive it over to CarMax and go, we're from ABC dealership. This is the, your offer for this car. We have an agreement with you guys. They will then turn around and accept that offer, pay the dealership the $10,000, and I've heard they've also given, them, depending on the price of the car, give them like a $500 bonus for, for bringing the car to them. So the dealership will get something out of the deal. So they will get another 500 bucks out of the deal for, for doing that transaction for CarMax. So that's what you like. So if you ha have a great offer from CarMax, hunt for a dealership that has an, an agreement with CarMax. That way you will get the maximum for your trade if CarMax offers you a good price and you get the tax credit. Okay, so now we got the trade, we, now we got the offer, now it's just making it happen. Uh, for financing, uh, you need to basically go and find your financing first. So you have something on you and with you when you walk into the finance office and say, hey, uh, I've already got my credit union giving me this APR, what can you guys give me? And make them match it or beat it. Normally they'll beat it by a little bit, but that way you have the starting point. It's always about having a starting point and not letting them just give you a blanket price, a blanket APR without you doing your research. Okay, that's that. So that's how I buy a car. In the next episode, we'll talk about the process I went through buying my Jeep Wrangler. So stick around, like, subscribe down below, and we'll talk about cars some more.